move on uh, to uh, our next speaker, um, uh, Filino uh, Palafox. He is actually also um, uh, representing the CTBOH. He is, a, he is the uh, country representative for Indonesia. I think the introduction, uh, I will leave up to Professor Kim uh, to give you an introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Felino A. Parafax Jr., he is a principal of Parafax Associate, which is uh, one of the top 500 world architect firm. He was educated at Santo Tomas University and the University of the Philippines and Herbert. He is going to present a tall building in the Metro manner. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, my my please, staff please, Yeah, yeah. Give a hand to. Uh, yeah. uh, to thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Stefan. My staff has put too many, too many slides, so I'll do maybe seven seconds per slide. Yeah. 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 Just to locate the Philippines, if you rotate the map of the world, actually it's strategic center. It's no wonder for about 300 years, it was the Asia Pacific hub of Spanish Europe, and for 100 years, the Americans. And this is the Philippines, located in Southeast Asia. We have so many number, uh, advantages, like we're number one in marine diversity, we have the most number of sailors, we're number two in call centers and BPOs after India. We have the third longest short line waterfront. We're number five in mineral resources, number four in gold, number 12 in human resources. We have this, but we have these challenges, traffic, traffic, overpopulation, and so on. Just like in Latin American countries, uh, our country was, uh, the first uh, planning was introduced by Spaniards with the, with the 16th century, uh, Laws of the Indies were intramuros within the walls for the Illustrados in the Principalia, the, the rich and powerful, and extramuros outside the walls for the Indios, the Sanglais and the peasants, the locals. Yeah, so this, we had the town plaza which was good. Every Sunday, people come together. And it influenced our urban planning even up to this day, where you have a concentration of jobs surrounded by gated communities. So Metro Manila, 1948, 1970, 1990, 2010, and 2020. By 20, we have about 10 million population today in Metro Manila, and by 2020, about 20 million uh, uh, urban population just for that megalopolis. And this is the modern city today. We have tall buildings surrounded by low-density neighborhoods. And this is uh, Makati, the fin financial district, which most of the tall buildings are, are, are taking place, uh, Fort Bonifacio, another district. And we have safety challenges of habitable structures in the Philippines. And we are in the ring of fire in the Pacific from the Americas to Asia. And why prepare disaster preparedness? Why it's very important? So this is the ring of fire from the Americas to, to Asia. And the Philippines is uh, one of them. We are in the earthquake zone number four. So we have challenges of climatic uh, variations, flooding, typhoons, storm surges, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, ground subsidence, landslide, and tsunami, which we share with the, with the other countries in the ring of fire in the Pacific. There are also man-made uh, challenges like land accidents, fire, sea accidents, air accidents, industrial accidents, pollution, civil strife, red tide, and oil spill, and terrorism. And uh, lessons from flooding. We had big floods two years ago. And we had, in 1905, Daniel Burnham planned Manila, four years ago of Chicago. And what he had prescribed that time was the inspiration should be uh, like uh, Venice in Paris. Mixed-use development, wide boulevards, lots of open spaces. We followed this plan while the Americans were there. But when we became an independent country in 1946, we, we got the wrong models. So this was the plan for Manila. You can see similarities of Paris and Venice maybe because we have rivers and creeks as well. And in 1976-77, I was the team leader of a World Bank funded project, Metroplan, Manila Metroplan, which land use, transportation and development, which we, we identified areas that are safer to develop, 
and areas that are vulnerable to disasters. So this is the map of Metro Manila where on the shaded portion, we told government that time that these areas are vulnerable to disasters and we discouraged development here. But the past 40 years or 35 years, our recommendations were not followed. And this is the earthquake fault line and even build uh, structures are allowed to be built on top of the fault line. And you can build five meters from a fault line, but never on top of it. Several structures are allowed to be built there. And we also sort of recommended doing a floodway, which they did, but they did not do the spillway. So we have a lake here that gets um, over flooded during the typhoons, but there's no exit of water towards Manila Bay. And this is the topography of Metro Manila. So there's a big basin here where it's easily flooded. And which we identified that this, uh, even in the 1970s, this was a flood map. And uh, the recent flooding, practically the same, the same flood map. So what needs to be done? I personally put forward 100 recommendations to the Philippine government. And some are being followed, but most are still, I think, suffering from analysis paralysis. And uh, six of our 110 architects were also uh, victims of the flooding. And we did a quick and dirty design competition inside the office on one Monday morning. And we came out with, uh, instead of just mitigation measures, maybe adaptive architecture. Like maybe you float your house with a building pad that would float if you are in an area liable to flooding and so on. And maybe there are four wave of cities. This started from the port, port-driven cities that are areas that are liable to flooding. And the cities came out of the railways, then the highways and freeways. And this century, we're told that it will be airport-driven cities. But we cannot just uh, abandon those old cities. Maybe one way of doing it, elevate the city, including the houses, put them on stilts, earthquakes, uh, the different disasters, this is the fault line. And a study was done together with JICA of Japan, Earthquake Impact Reduction Study for Metropolitan Manila. And, um, Interestingly, it showed that um, many of the, the buildings, only about, about 11, 27, or about 40% of low-rise buildings will be damaged on a, a magnitude 7.2 uh, scale. And the 30 to 60-story uh, buildings, only 2%. So we had uh, advised government to immediately carry out a 10-year plan and program. And even in my own company, we have an emergency preparedness response manual. And everybody is required to, to be familiar with it. Like our office is on the 11th floor, but the fire trucks are only reached up to 10th floor. So we have to, to, to be familiar with all of it. And our approach is we always look at the environment or planet Earth, social equity or people, then profit. And principal smart growth. This century is supposed to be rest century. We, in our master planning, we require 10 trees for every car because take take about 10 trees to recover the carbon monoxide per car. Some of the worst and best practices: inclusionary versus uh, uh, exclusionary. You have we have urban sprawl, whereas the rest of Asia they went vertical urbanism. And uh, unfortunately. Uh, our planning models, zoning models, copied erroneously the wrong model. Postwar, Los Angeles, and Beverly Hills. And with heavy concentration of jobs and economic activities in the centers, so we have central business districts, very, very high density, tall structures, surrounded by gated communities. So we have a big imbalance between place of jobs and place of work. So these are some of the you're familiar with. Uh, inserted several projects we've done elsewhere in the world, just do quickly. And uh, like this one, a resort we designed, we made sure lessons from Japan, no livable space will be below 10 meters above the high water mark. So in case of a tsunami, uh, there are no livable, livable bedrooms and we respected the topography. This one, you grow, your, you grow your resort, all the building materials will be grown on site and five years after, uh, bamboo architecture. 
Uh, this is a project that we, we work together with SOM, a um, polluted power plant. And uh, we made it a walkable, walkable community, mixed-use, high-rise. And it's now the highest rent, highest value uh, in, in the Philippines right now. And started out from, we had a brownfield remediation. There's another one in the south of Metro Manila, a uh, south way south in Mindanao. The, the flooding level is about five meters high. So we elevated the structures in a podium to six meters high. There's some projects we did elsewhere in the world. And there is hope. With all these uh, challenges, we take pictures of the uglification of the city. And I give them to the mayors. And we come out with perspectives. I call them postcards from the future. And so this is uh, our main river, Pasig River. We we destroyed it the past 60 years. I've been taking pictures, and this is a postcard from the future. I showed it to the mayors. Asian Development Bank is funding the cleaning up of the river, putting river walks, and so on. And it's really, this area also liable to flooding, so we're elevating the whole city. And it's really, this is a squatter area. BBC had featured this. Instead of relocating the informal settlers, we do Islam upgrading. And development that's worthy of the name unless it's spread even like butter and a bread. And the quotation from Daniel Burnham, make no little plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood. Make big plans, aim high in hope and work, remembering that a noble logical diagram, once recorded, will never die. And this is our work in 35 countries, the Philippines. This is our first book sold out, second book still there. And maybe just to describe the Philippines, the area is about three times the size of Korea, South Korea. It's, uh, it's 350 times the size of Singapore and so on. We, we used to be number two in Asian economy after Japan until the 1960s. Everybody has overtaken us because of the, because of the challenges of good governance. But uh, Goldman Sachs had forecasted that provided we have good governance, the Philippines can be in the top 20 economies in the world by 2025. And in Indonesia, number 14, by 2025. So we'd like to live in environment-friendly cities and communities that are better connected, more accessible, more walkable, more bikeable, safer, lighted and convenient, and clean with mixed income neighborhoods that are cross-generational with mixed developments, with places to live, workshop and dine, learn and worship with healthcare, recreation and leisure, with more 24-hour cycle activity centers. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, June. I think that was a very interesting uh, insight into the Philippines. I mean, in most, in most countries, uh, uh, tall buildings are considered to be a safety risk. But in the, in the Philippines, I presume because uh, a lot of the low-rise buildings are not done with the same rigor and the same um, um, considerations as, as high-rise buildings, they're actually less safe uh, than, than the denser uh, developments. Also, you mentioned issues about urban sprawl and how actually a denser city center can, uh, can resolve a lot of uh, issues with regard to traffic and, and, uh, and other areas. I mean, for those of you who haven't been to the Philippines, it's a fantastically beautiful country. I think June has highlighted some of the uh, challenges they have in the Philippines. It must be one of the countries which is uh, uh, battered by by a lot of the uh, a lot of uh, the possible natural disasters you can think about, but I would encourage you to go. It is a fantastic country. It's very beautiful. It has fantastic beaches and fantastic landscape. Um, so um, hopefully, uh, June, the, uh, the, the 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 Philippines can uh, can live up to their expectations and de develop in the in the way 